off the film and walks about the room and looks around. Oh, how he misses you singing on. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Starlights and dewdrops are awaiting thee. Good morning, Maggie. Mm, life is never dull with you, Lee. <laughs> Every morning you serenade my uterus with song. I just want our daughter to appreciate music as much as I do. Mm, then why don't you just wait until she's born? And take her to the record barn. Well, I figure this way. She'll come out singing. <laughs> Wait a minute. They can hear a few words. Yeah, she's telling you to stop. Uh, nope, she's definitely talking to me. She says, Mom, you have terrible taste in music. Listen to Dad, he knows what he's talking about. Well, daughter of mine, let's say that. Oh, stop it. What do you want for breakfast? Western omelet or French toast? <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> mm. Don't forget we have an appointment with the realtor tomorrow morning at 10. She has some new listings to show us. Right. I'll leave the office by 4. Stop by the dry cleaners and the market. I'm gonna make something special for dinner tonight. <gasps> Mr. Strong, you're spoiling me. When I deliver this bundle, I hope to marry a guy just like you. I would have married you before you got pregnant, Miss Riley. You're just easier to catch in this condition. I know we go over this every morning, but in case something happens, you have my numbers, right? Committed to memory. Your cell, office phone, even your fax. If I go into labor, you'll know before the baby does. I should probably go now, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love you. Love you. Breathe. Breathe. Geez, some people misunderstand a friendly Breathe. gesture. Breathe. 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 
Morning, Lee. Morning, Carol. I've got chocolate mocha and strawberry cream. Give me the mocha. It'll be my chocolate fix for the day. You are the best boss in the world. I mean, not only do you get your own coffee, but you bring me one. Hey, we're all on the same team here. So what's on the agenda? Um, it is pretty light until 11. You have the Cuffs t-shirt company, and you have to approve one of these designs for a giveaway. They're all hideous. I wonder we give them away for free. Huh. Uh, what else you got? Uh, Damon Scott's agent wants the team to donate 100 basketballs for Damon's troubled youth clinic next month. I'm all in favor for the stay on the court and not in the court campaign, but Damon Scott made $160 million on his last contract. Give them 50 basketballs and send Damon a bill for the other 50. What's next? Uh, Don and Sella want to see you. They say they have the greatest promotion idea ever. <laughs> That's the third time this week. Cinnamon. Hello. Hey, Maggie. What are you doing? Mm, sitting on the couch eating bonbons and watching cheesy soap operas. You're bad. You know, I don't mind the candy, but I can't see how you can subject our child to that superficial crap. I walk out of the room during the sex scenes. Not fair enough. Put the phone next to your stomach. What? Come on, I want to talk to my daughter. Put the phone next to your belly. Okay. <clears throat> to -ra -lu -ra -lu -ra. Hush now, don't you cry. To ra lu ra lu ra. To ra lu ra lie. That's an Irish lullaby. I, I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> So what do you got? Great idea for fan appreciation night. Great, it is brilliant. Okay, you know how we usually give away a car or a trip? We have something even better. It's an original idea. No other team's even trying this promotion. Go on. During warm-ups, we pick a fan from the stands at random, and we put them in the starting lineup. All right, I, I see where this is going. It'll be fantastic. They'll get their own team uniform. They can talk to the other players on the bench. They'll shoot baskets in a pro game. No other team can offer such excitement. Well, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but what if the random fan is an old guy with an artificial hip? Well, the way our team is playing, you think anyone's going to notice? Uh, that's true, but there's other factors to involve. Uh, clearing your roster spot. We can uh, put a team member on injury reserve before the game. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Even if we had the fans sign a contract, the league would never approve of this. It messes with the integrity of the game. I'm afraid the answer is no. You have anything else? I've been talking to the Raleigh Beer Company. Don, we've talked about this before. I don't believe an alcoholic beverage promotion is appropriate for our team. All right, sorry, I forgot about your problem. Let me clarify something for you. I don't have a problem. I'm an alcoholic, and I will be for the rest of my life. It's not something that just miraculously disappears when you stop drinking. It's an illness, and I battle it every single day. Lee, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. I want you to understand that I'm not anti-alcohol. I realize that our team generates a lot of revenue from alcohol-related sales in our arena. That is true. And even though I don't condone the actions of booze-filled morons, I realize it's their right to pay our overinflated prices for a cup of warm beer than act like assholes in the cheap seats. But, back to business. In regards to your beer stein promotion, let me give you the primary reason why an alcoholic-related giveaway is inappropriate. 
Our star player was arrested for DWI last month. And I believe that would give a wrong message, wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. Good. Now go find us another sponsor for that date. Got it. Oh, and Don, I'm glad we had this little chat. Me too. Lee, there's a gentleman on the phone. He won't give his name, but he said it's urgent that he speak to you. Um, all right, I'll take the call. He's on line three. Is Lee strong? Leo John, you need to come home. Dad? Your mother's not well. She's in the hospital. Oh, what's wrong? She's had a heart attack. I don't want to go into all the details on the phone. Just get here as soon as you can. But, but Dad! 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 I never packed that quick. I think I packed your electric razor. Either yours or mine. So, I guess you'll look like shit, but my legs will look great. Lee, I think my water broke. What? I said my water broke. Mm. Oh. Uh, what do we do? Nothing. I was just trying to snap you back to reality. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's just the phone call has me rattled. Is that all he said? Yeah. My father's a man of few words. Hmm. Wouldn't know. Never met your father. Never met your mother either. Matter of fact, in the three years that I've known you, you've mentioned your parents once. You said that they live on Staten Island and you don't get back there much. Some would say I'm naive for not demanding the whole story. Especially since I'm carrying your child. But I'm a good judge of character. And you'll tell me when you're ready. When I look outside I can see my life So open up to the sky And breathe in slow Just breathe in slow Let's go with the flow Every time I see you I know I have to slow down And go with the flow Fill up form A1, return it when you're done. Um, oh, we just need a little help. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize this was an emergency. Oh, wait, she, she's not... One second, sir. Maternity, can you send a wheelchair to the front desk? Make it quick. Uh, you don't they understand. They will be here right away. Can I get you anything? No, I'm fine. We just... I mean, most women in your condition come in here kicking and screaming, but you are really gone. I should be, considering I'm not in labor. So why are you here? We are here to see my mother. She's had a heart attack. Her name is Alice Strong. Can you please look up her room number? By the way, sir. Never mind. Dad. Dad, this is Maggie Riley. Maggie, this is my father, Leo John Sr. It's very nice to meet you, Mr. Strong. I just wish it were under better circumstances. Hello. How's the mom? When, when can we see her? She's gone, son. She passed away 20 minutes ago. <laughs> what? Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I, I don't believe this. We, we got here as fast as we could. I know she died peacefully. She was only on the respirator for three days. Wait, what? Three days? When did she have the heart attack? A uh, week ago. A week? You waited a week before calling me? What the hell's the matter with you? 
calm down. No, no, don't tell me to calm down. I want to hear his reason for waiting a week before calling me. At the time, I, I didn't think there was much cause for concern. She was in the hospital. She was getting the best of care. There was nothing you could do. She was my mother. I should have been notified. You made your feelings quite clear when you left town five years ago. You got to bring that up now? You know, you're a real cold-hearted bastard. Look, boy, don't feel any guilt over this. Don't call me boy. I'm a man. <laughs> Do you hate me so much that you couldn't wait for me? I believe I should have been allowed to express an opinion on how to end my marriage. Jesus mother's Christ! It wasn't your decision to make. And I pray you never have to. You see that? My hands were shaking when I signed the papers. They asked me if I wanted to be in the room when it happened. If I had been, you'd be burying both of us now. But, Dad... Shut up! For once, just shut up and listen. How dare you walk in here and make demands? I called you as a courtesy. Frankly, I'm surprised you got on the plane. I thought I'd have to mail you an obituary. Now, if you'll excuse me, my wife just died, and I want to be alone. Excuse me. Um, that's my mother. Can I have a moment alone, please? Of course, sir. I'm here, Mom. I would have been here sooner, but Dad... Well, you know how he can be. <laughs> this war between me and him... My biggest regret is it drove me away from you. And, and that's entirely my fault. I should have been a better son. <laughs> I'm sure Sarah met you at the gate. She... Tell her I'm so deeply sorry. And that I think about her often. Lee? Uh, come in. <laughs> Mom, this is Maggie. And this is your granddaughter. She's healthy. And she's gonna be beautiful, intelligent, and generous. Just like all the strong women. Let me guess. Ride along here, too? They're completely booked. The auto show's in town. Can you think of any place else? <sighs> the Crenshaw Lodge. It's out on Mill Road. The Crenshaw Lodge burned down last year. <laughs> That's great. Now what do we do? I seem to recall the story of a man and his pregnant wife finding no room at the inn. Want to go look for a manger? No. 
I know where we can go. Hmm. I checked our bags. I didn't pack your razor. All right. Mr. Strong, you have a lovely home. Thank you. I'll get it. Hello, Lee. Reggie! Oh, it's good to see you. Your dad called me. So sorry about your mother. How are you holding up? I can't believe she's gone. <laughs> I miss her so much. God was good to her. He didn't allow her to suffer. Tell me, how are you and your father getting along? Same old wounds. Come on, I want you to meet someone. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie? I'm very pleased to introduce you to this wonderful gentleman. He's known me since the day I was born, and he's more than a longtime neighbor. He's my father's best friend. Let's be honest, Lee. I'm Leo's only friend. We're only <laughs> friends because of the proximity of our houses. If you lived on another block, you know, we wouldn't talk at all. No one can stand to live next to you. <laughs> Anyways, Maggie Riley, this is Reggie Gray. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Gray. No, no, sweetheart. Stay where you are. <laughs> I'll come to you, and please, call me Reggie. All right, Reggie. How about that? Little Leo John is gonna be a papa. You know, my Ronnie got married. Really? Some woman finally tamed that wild man? Angela's a doll. It'll be four years next month. This one and my son were real hellraisers growing up. Always get in trouble. Really? Remember senior year homecoming dance? They spiked the punch with 100 proof vodka. So did everybody get really hammered? Yes and no. They put the booze in the wrong cooler. Everyone at the dance was fine, but the football team got really messed up. We lost that game 49 to zero. <laughs> I'll never forget that game. <laughs> you do remember our kids got expelled. Reg, she doesn't want to hear about that stuff. Yeah. I guess you're right. Let me show you some pictures of my grandbabies. That's Dustin. And that's Ashley. Oh, they're so cute. Yep. Four and two. <laughs> oh, Ashley's adorable. Yeah, she's going to be a real heartbreaker. So what do you think about all this baby talk, Grandpa? Did you think you'll see this day? Ruthfully? No. Excuse me, I'm gonna get started on the dishes. Lee, why don't you and Reggie go into the living room? I'll make some coffee. <laughs> what are you trying to find? Coffee. I'll make the coffee. You go sit down. You shouldn't be on your feet. I feel fine, Mr. Strong. My son will never support your child. VP of marketing, nice. <laughs> so you get a lot of Mustang merchandise. <laughs> sure, we get all kinds of stuff. What do you want? Can you get me a Montana Mustangs convertible? <laughs> How about a leather jacket? Deal. I know him. He's unreliable. He only thinks about himself. Mr. Strong, I realize you and Lee haven't spoken in several years, so... I suggest you sit down and talk to him before you attack his character. What is it with you? I'm trying to wise you up to the facts. Did your family throw you out when you told them you were pregnant? No! My family's very happy that we're expecting. They're very supportive of us. I hope it's financial support. Mr. Strong, you don't know me, just as I don't know you. But I've lived with Lee for the past three years, and I know he's a warm and caring person. He's going to make an exceptional father. 
Which is something that I can't say for you. Oh yeah? Well when the loser leaves you, don't come knocking on my door with no bastard child. You ain't no relation of mine. I wouldn't want my child around a narrow-minded asshole like you. You're quite possibly the cruelest son of a bitch I've ever met. What the hell's going on in here? Maggie? What the hell did you say to her? I told her the truth. You're a bum, you've always been one, and you always will be. You know, you may treat me like shit, but you don't ever speak to her like that again. But yeah, go on, run away. That's what you always do best. Hey, this will all be over in a few days. Sorry, Lee. Maggie, you don't have to apologize for anything. He's entirely to blame for this. I can't believe I yelled at that man. He just lost his wife. He must think I'm a terrible person. I wouldn't worry about him. Leo Strong hasn't felt anything but contempt for years. I don't know how it even happened. One minute I'm looking for coffee and then a second later I'm screaming at your father. He has that effect on me. I'm not sure about this. I asked him about funeral arrangements. The man grunted at me. What am I supposed to do? The blue one. He doesn't have too many choices. After a few phone calls, I'll know which funeral home. Mm, the red one. So you're just going to walk in there with a suit and some jewelry and tell them that's how you want your mother laid out? Pretty much. Now help me pick from one of these choices. I think this is a mistake. You need to work with your father on this, not go behind his back. I tried to talk to him. The man ignored me. I've got to be aggressive or I'm just going to be pushed to the side completely. Now help me pick one of these suits. This won't be easy. I don't know anything about your mother. Look through her jewelry box. I'm sure you'll find something that works. Wow, this is a beautiful piece. My grandmother gave that to her. She wore it to church every Sunday. Then it should stay with her. I'll get it. Mwah. Leo Strong? Uh, he's not here. I'm his son. I'll sign for it. Here, here's something for you. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't accept that. Why not? The mortuary does not allow us to accept gratuities. Mortuary? Yes, sir. Have a nice day. Dad, can you step into the living room for a minute? You want to talk about this? I got nothing to say. Fine, then I'll say what's on my mind. You had my mother cremated, and you never thought to discuss it with me. Can we get dialogue now? You know, Dad, <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised by this. Just when I think you've reached your lowest depth, you treat everyone to a new level of hell. I didn't have to consult you. It wasn't your decision to make. Stop saying that! Stop saying that. My opinion may not matter to you, but I still hold my mother in high regard. At the very least, we owe the woman a memorial service for putting up with you all those years. While you're out, I made the arrangements. It's Friday at the assembly hall. A notice will be in tomorrow's paper. I don't care if you show up or not.
Do you think he'll... Honestly, I don't know. Thank you. Hey, Reggie. How you doing, hon? We're okay. Not much of a turnout. Despite the low number, Alice was well-liked. But being married to Leo, she didn't socialize much. Speaking of Mr. Personality, I see he decided to join us. I just hope we can make it through the day without a fight. Mr. Strong, sir, I just wanted to express my sympathies to you. I just had to be here today for Mrs. Strong. She was a great lady. I skipped school to be here today. Who the hell are you? Tammy, Tammy Ward, your paper girl. I delivered the Daily Herald for the last four years. We still getting that paper? Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm glad you came here today. Mrs. Strong was my We favorite. need to cancel that subscription. I thought we canceled it years ago. All right, uh, thanks for stopping by. Hi. Weren't you living with the Amish up in the Pennsylvania Dutch country? <laughs> no, ma'am. I heard you're running with some bikers out in Oakland. So, you're Alice's son. You're the singer in the rock band, right? Uh, you bet. <laughs> so, who's this? Uh, just some groupie I picked up on the road and knocked up. <laughs> ah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Jeez, you leave town for a few years and everybody's imagination goes nuts. I know. Different people thought you joined the Marines, Greenpeace, and the circus. It's quite a colorful life you've led. <laughs> Let's get this thing started before they ask me about my presidency. Good morning. Lee asked me to say a few kind words about his mother, Alice. I'm sure anyone in this room can stand up here and talk about Alice Strong's kindness. She was a good neighbor, valued member of the community and church. Those are qualities everyone knew about Alice. Now let me tell you something perhaps you didn't know. Alice helped me through a personal crisis. Two years ago, my beloved wife, Rachel, was diagnosed with breast cancer. I'll admit I was a complete wreck, but Alice was my anchor when the seas got rough. I was angry at this thing that was taking my Rachel, but mostly I was helpless until this angel of mercy picked me up and made me realize that Rachel needed me to be her strength. After my Rachel passed on, Alice made sure I was taking care of myself. I lost track of the number of meals that were left on my back porch. Lee. I still have some of your mom's plates. Alice Strong knew how to deal with tragedy. I can't imagine how she felt with the loss of her beautiful daughter, Sarah. Um, I'm sorry, I won't dwell on the past, but we can take comfort in the fact that they will be reunited in heaven. to me, too. I'm sorry. I just had to get out of there to clear my head. Tell me about Sarah. She was two years older than me. She was intelligent, outgoing, and generous person. 
According to Leo, after they made Sarah, the mold broke into a million pieces. <laughs> no pressure for the second born. She sounds like a wonderful person. Hmm, she was. And even though she was a favorite child, we got along fine. Anytime anyone needed help, she was right there without hesitation. I guess that's why she decided to become a doctor. Please. Sorry. My, my parents were so proud of her when she got into med school. The whole family went out that night to celebrate. We were having a great time. Had good food, good wine. Too much wine. I realize now I, I shouldn't have been behind the wheel. I insisted that I could drive even though I had way too much to drink. We were laughing and joking. And Sarah reached over the seat to hand something to my mom in the back seat. And, and in my drunken haze, uh, the car drifted too far over the yellow line. And suddenly I saw an oncoming car. So I swerved to the right and plowed right into a telephone pole. My parents were badly shaken up and, and I had a sprained wrist and a few cuts. And Sarah? <laughs> she died on impact. <laughs> it was all my fault. It was all my fault. Oh. No. No, it was an accident, baby. You weren't in control of yourself. It could have happened to anyone. <laughs> Was it just the accident? After the crash, I was arrested. The DA took mercy on me because it was family. But. What? Tell me. But Leo insisted that I stay in jail. He was trying to punish me. I missed my sister's funeral. I never got to say goodbye. After a few days, my, my mom talked him into getting me out. When he came to got me, I couldn't stay in this place anymore. So I packed my bags and left. Where did you go? I wandered around the Midwest for a while. Working odd jobs, 
I guess those folks weren't too far off. I found one that I liked. It was a mascot for a minor league baseball team. <laughs> that was Claude the Crab of the Crawford Crabs. It was a lot of fun and got me into promotions and marketing. And the drinking? The drinking stopped the night of the crash. My only regret is it didn't stop sooner. You told me you were an alcoholic. I never pressed you for the details. No, I wish I had. I'm sorry. It's just, just hard being back in this place. Are you angry that I didn't tell you all this before? I'm not angry. I'm hurt that you didn't share this part of your life with me. You promised me no more secrets. I promise. Love you, Maggie Riley. You're the type of girl they write songs about. You ready to go? Either our clothes have lost weight or this suitcase is empty. I think we should stay. Why? I told you how painful this place is for me. I want to get the hell out of here. That pain is the reason why you should stay. You have to resolve this conflict with your father. <laughs> I'm willing to concede the battle and walk away from the war. I'm sure that old son of a bitch will enjoy the victory. Please stop swearing in front of your daughter. You swore the other night like a sailor. That was different. How? I was a mother defending her young. <laughs> what are you, like a mother coyote? Can we leave? No. We're staying. Damn your stubborn Irish demeanor. Look, he's not exactly my favorite person either. But he is your father. And I think you owe it to your mother's memory to try to reconcile with the man. All right, I'll try. <laughs> you hear that? I'm gonna try, okay? We're both gonna try. <laughs> Hello, Lee Strong here. Reggie Gray here. Hey, Reggie. Is your dad around? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, listen, can he call you back? I'm waiting on an important call from my office. No problem. I'll call him later. Th okay, thanks. Bye. Hello, Lee Strong here. Hey, Lee, it's Don. I have uh, Ralph Dudley from Dudley Eyewear with me. Good morning, Mr. Dudley. Good morning. Uh, I, I want to apologize for not being there in person. No apology necessary, my boy. Don explained the situation, and I want to express my condolences to your family. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Now, I know you're a busy man, so I'm going to get straight to the heart of the matter. As you know, the Mustangs will be hosting the All-Star Game next year, and we're trying to assemble an All-Star lineup of corporate sponsors. And we want Dudley Eyewear to be the official sunglasses of All-Star Weekend. Uh, excuse me for a minute. Dad! 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 What? You never sneak up on somebody with a chainsaw. I didn't sneak up on you. I was yelling from the house. Oh. I couldn't hear you over the saw. Well, obviously. Can you keep it down? I'm trying to work. Me too? Yeah, but I'm on the phone with my office. Long distance? They called me. 
So can you stop sawing until I'm off the phone? Fine. I'm sorry for the inter interruption. Um, now, as I was saying, we want Dudley Eyewear on our team. Mr. Dudley, I can't tell you how sorry I am for this. Can you excuse me for one more minute? Um, he'll be right back. Uh, do you want some coffee? Hey! I'm not sawing, I'm just hammering. What are you, like five years old? Stop making noise! I'm on the phone! All right, I'm back. He's gone, Lee. Dudley left. What? What did you say? Something about having his time wasted. What do you want me to do? Nothing. I'll take care of it when I get back. I'll talk to you later, Don. Let me guess, I'm smoking too loud. Thanks a lot! Your childish games just cost my company a million dollar deal! So you're off the phone? Yeah, the client walked out. Dylan, never end with you, old man! What? Never mind! <sighs> I hope the Mustangs do better in the second half. I guess it's hard promoting a team that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, winning helps. There's a commercial for one of those male sex drive pills. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't have that problem. Neither do I. I've never used them. Really? Figured someone your age would need a little something. Son, the day I need a booster to get my rocket launched is the day I stop going into space. <laughs> So, you want to watch the Yankee game tomorrow? Don't make any plans for tomorrow, you promised. I know, um, we're still going. What's tomorrow? She's never been to New York. So we're going to do the tourist thing. Staten Island Ferry, Times Square, all the usual spots. Sounds fun. I'm looking forward to it. That's a lot of walking. I'm in great shape. Speaking of which, come on, Dad. Oh. Time to practice. Reggie, cut that in. Sure. Guess your job wasn't finishing the bedroom. <laughs> nope, I always finish what I start. Grab that pillow. All right. Yep. <clears throat> All right, honey. We're going to start out with some breathing exercises. Stop. Now push. Good. Now we're gonna go again. Is it time? No, Dad. We're just simulating the birth. Oh. Because it looked like the real thing. <laughs> well, if it bothers you, we can go upstairs. No, stay where you are. I'm just gonna write some checks. What are we doing here, darling? Trying to block the pain? <laughs> no, we're trying to be more in tune with the baby. It's called birth management. All I know is I couldn't go through it they'd have to knock me out cold. <laughs> it's not like the old days when the father stayed in the waiting room and passed out cigars. <laughs> Do you have something on your mind? Yes, I believe I do. Let me just clear up some facts. Not all Neanderthals stayed outside the cave and waited for the wife to deliver the offspring. Some of them were present at the main event. I'm just saying that it's different now. My father's an equal partner in the birth process. Mm. Well, I wouldn't exactly call us equal partners. Go pass a bowling ball out your ass and then get back to me. Exactly. He has no idea what you're going through. I've been there. Really? When? When your mother was pregnant with your sister. We prepared for every scenario. We, we were nervous because this was our first child. But the one detail we didn't count on was the weather. Sarah arrived the same time as a February blizzard. Roads were impossible. So what did you do? The only thing we could do, told the baby to come back in the spring. I'm kidding. I went across the street to get our neighbor, Cindy. She was a pediatric nurse. 
She guided Alice and me through the whole thing right here in the house. Miss Sarah showed up at 4.43 in the morning. There's nothing more amazing than uh, seeing your first child come into the world. Nothing. Dad, I didn't Excuse know me. you. Oh. The man's been through the ringer lately. game. I'm up three games to one. You still want to play, old man? Yeah. I'm just warming up. That's good, because the last game I couldn't detect a pulse. The form is horrible. All things considered, it's good having Lee home again. Maggie seems like a nice girl, don't you think? She's very nice. Will you shoot? That's a leaner. Did you know Lee has a staff of 20? All right, what is this? This is horseshoes. You toss a horseshoe, and you hope for a little luck. Ever since we started playing, you've been talking about nothing but my son and his nice girlfriend. There's not much to talk about in this little town. Bullshit. What are you driving at? Okay. I'm sick of you driving people away. That's not your concern. If I don't look out for you, no one else will. For what it's worth, you need to sit down with your son for a few minutes. He walked away once before. There's nothing to stop him from never coming back here again. Of you. 
Want to go for lunch tomorrow? Sure. That'd be fine. Great. Steak sandwich with green peppers and onions, no red peppers, and a Coke. And for you, sir? Um, sounds good. I'll have the same. Thank you. <clears throat> I gotta tell you. Very strange being back home. I'm sure. Truthfully, never thought I'd be back this way again. Same here. But I gotta tell you, your invitation made me realize that there's still hope for us to have a meaningful relationship. <clears throat> Honestly, I never thought we could actually sit down and have a normal conversation. You know, things can be very different now. Maggie and I really want you to be part of our life. I'm sure you do. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Don't try to con me. I know why you're still here. Really? Why? It's got to be the inheritance, of course. But you're barking up the wrong tree. Your mother never worked. I earned everything. So you're wasting your time. Well, that's become abundantly clear. I'm glad we had this chance to clear the air. I'll have one of those steak sandwiches. You can wrap up the other one. Unfucking believable. The man is unfucking believable. I tried, Maggie. I really tried. I sat down with the man and he shit all over me. I, I can't stay in this house one more fucking minute. You not to curse in front of the baby. Oh, I'm sorry. The next time I'm gonna let loose with some obscenities, I'll I'll tell you to put on a heavy sweater so our daughter won't hear us in the womb. We can't leave. Uh oh, we're most certainly are leaving. No, I mean we can't leave. Why can't we leave? I passed the deadline yesterday. What deadline? I can't fly after eight and a half months. Yesterday was the deadline. Well, how can you say something? I didn't see the point. Things were going good with your father. Didn't think we were gonna run out. Well, we'll drive to Montana. No fucking way. What if I go into labor in Jerkwater, Iowa? Those people only know how to deliver calves and piglets. We stay here until the baby is born. Put the pillow over your stomach. What? Just do it. Fuck!
excuse me. I was listening to that. Listen on your own time. The dinner table's for talking. You're gonna put the music back on. So what do you want to talk about? I don't know, anything. What can you tell me about this dining room set? Okay, what's the story? Well... Alice uh, bought that china closet at an auction. She really loved that piece. And she was determined to find a, a table and chairs that would match it. Every time we thought we were close, she would find some imperfection. The search went on for years. I can't tell you how many dinners were served on TV tables. Now I know why you always eat in front of the television. So one day I'm doing this boiler inspection. I used to work for an oil company, and um, I'm in this old lady's basement, and she has all these uh, newspapers and boxes piled up down there. So I tell her, hey, this is a real fire hazard. And she tells me she's waiting for her son to come clean it out. And then she asks me if I want to make a few bucks, maybe I could do the job on the weekend. Money is money. Yeah, and he drags me along on a Saturday morning. Like you had something better to do? So we start hauling out the junk, and then we pull back this big canvas tarp, and underneath it, this table and these chairs. Turns out the woman's husband put the china closet in the auction. It didn't fit in the apartment. And when we told the lady where her china closet had ended up, she was so happy it found a good home, she sold us the rest of the set for 50 bucks. It's absolutely beautiful. Alice polished it down every week. Her dedication certainly shows. She really loved this room. She insisted we eat in here every night. I don't know why she went to such a fuss. Kitchen table would have been fine. Being as it was just the two of us. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I know. Well, let me help. Don't roll as good as it used to. The, uh, the wheels are rusted. Right. Uh, Reggie was supposed to help me move this thing, but he's nowhere to be found. It's all right. I'm here. Thank you. What? I said thank you. That's a first? Yeah, don't make a big deal out of it. I won't. Fine. All right. See you later. Yeah. God 
damn Reggie. You always this stubborn? Uh, guess so. Uh, my wife was the same way. Bullheaded. Couldn't do anything for her either. I'm sorry I never got to meet her. How long were you two married? 32 years. You know, um... Talking about Alice the other night. Well, it, it helped. Pain subsides, but never truly goes away. Yeah. Well, I've been down this road before. I have to tell you, Mr. Strong, I'm really impressed with your bed making skills. Huh. Yeah. Alice was in the hospital last year. Chest pains. They kept her for a week. So, you know, housework, stuff like that. You gotta learn it when there's nobody else around. Your son. Well, we didn't. Uh, we didn't know where Leo John was living. That's when I hired a private investigator to find him. I wanted to know how to reach him in case, you know, uh, when the time came. You should have contacted him then. I I'm sure he would have come home. We've been living in this house since the day I married Alice. If Leo John wanted to come home, he knew where to find us. What the hell are you doing? Putting a fresh coat on the roof. Why? Because I really needed it. No, why are you doing it? I'm cleaning it up. I figured since no one's using it, I'll ship it home and give it to my daughter in a few years. You did a really great job on it. I mean, it's really held up over the years. No. Huh? You're not taking it. <laughs> Look, I, Dad, I know you built it for Sarah, but it's not doing any good gathering dust. It stays here. I want your granddaughter to have it. I made it for my little girl and for her only. Stop being so dramatic. It's just a dollhouse. Besides, you should be proud. Another generation will get to play with it. to you. Oh no, not this time! Never! Let go of me! 
Do you realize how bad I want to hurt you right now? You can't hurt me. Oh, I bet I can inflict some damage. You think you can still hurt me? Swing away. Look at this mess. I can't fix this. Your father built this? Yeah. For your sister? And you wanted to ship it home for the baby? Yeah, I told you this already. I'm just trying to get the story straight. Did you ask him if you could take it? What? Did you ask your father if you could take it? No, I didn't ask my father if I could take his dollhouse. Why not? Well, because I didn't think I had to. Nobody's played with it in years. I mean, what are you driving at? All I'm saying is, you should have been a little more sensitive to your father's feelings. Uh, sensitive to his feelings? Why are you defending him? He's been nothing but a prick since we got here. Have some compassion, Lee. He's grieving. And so am I. It's hardly the same. You haven't seen your mother for five years. I can't believe you just said that. Are you, so I should, you're implying that I should grieve less than my father because he was here and I wasn't. No! I... He was the reason why I stayed away all those years. As far as I'm concerned, that man is dead to me. I have no problem perpetuating that thought. Lee, I'm sorry. Of course you have the right to grieve for your mother. I... But we're talking about a dollhouse. Sarah's dollhouse. You know how he felt about her. I'm sure there was a strong attachment to this. No pun intended. Yes, I'm painfully aware whose dollhouse this was, and yeah, yeah, she was Leo's daughter, but she was my sister too. And she's not here today because of me. Don't say no, that. Maggie, it's true. I, I, I know it was an accident, but, but I, I feel the guilt of it every day. And I thought maybe if I gave something that belonged to Sarah to my daughter. It would make my heart ache a little less. But that horrible man robbed that from me! Honey, don't do this to yourself. You know, you'd think after all these years, I would develop a tolerance to Leo's cruelty? But you've only known him for a short time, and you see what he's capable of. And yet, you ask me to have compassion for that wretched soul? The hell with him! Wait, please! I'm the one in need of support. My emotions have been frayed since we got here. And I'm here for you, baby. I'm not so sure. Why? Because I told you how much I hated being in this place. And I told you I wanted to leave, but you insisted we stay, no matter how much pain it caused me. You need to settle things with your father. Why? If not now, then when? He's the baby's grandfather. She shouldn't hate him. She doesn't even know him. We, we have to. Enough, Maggie. Just, I don't want to talk about him anymore. I don't want, I don't want anything to do with him. I just, I just need to be alone. But Lee. No, Maggie, just don't. Lee, wait. Let's talk about it. Lay your righteousness on the table. Set down your drink. Said I'm a man of decision You're starting to sing oh. Well, if it isn't the home wrecker... Hey, look. I had every right to do what I did. That kid... Ed, save it, Mr. Strong. 
you don't owe me an explanation. As you so bluntly put it, I ain't no relation of yours. What's all this? Uh, over the past few months, I've been putting together some scrapbooks for the baby. Sort of a where do I come from sort of thing. I could have put all of this on a couple of DVDs, but that's just not the same as holding it in her hands. I had a friend overnight them to me. I have to admit, this project has been pretty one-sided. As you can see, here are some report cards, athletic ribbons, perfect attendance certificates, all with my name on them. And the father? Ah, yes, the father. Lee's contribution consists of a work ID for the Mustangs and an expired driver's license. The only thing our daughter will know from her father's past is that he worked and he drove a car. Not exactly a comprehensive family tree. Excuse me. What have you got there? Photos. Uh, Alice had the same idea, you know, uh, put together an album. She never quite uh, got around to it. Most of those were taken when the, when the kids were young. This is so cool. Take whatever you want. Mr. Strong, can you tell me about these? I, I'd really rather not. Please, Leo, as a favor to me. How about this? Well, that's, uh, that's me. Um, I'm holding Sarah. She's probably three. Uh, that's uh, Leo John in the stroller. <clears throat> yeah, Alice took that picture. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Dad's pulling his usual shit again. And as usual, I'm taking the brunt of the abuse. <sighs> I don't even want to tell you what happened to your dollhouse. I, I, I can't explain it. Every time we get within five feet of each other, sparks fly and... And Maggie, she wants me to reconcile with him. Honestly, I really don't want to. <laughs> yeah, Maggie. <laughs> My Maggie. You're gonna be an aunt, Sarah. I, I love her. I just, I'm just mad at her right now. She tricked me in staying here. No, it's not accurate. God, I just, 
I just want to run away. I, I, but I know I can't. I just don't know what to do. This, this place, it's not home. It's, it's his place and, and I hate it. I just don't have all the answers that I need. And my nerves are so shot. I didn't, I just don't know what to do. I just don't give a damn! What about this one? Oh. <laughs> Tell me. Well, that is Leo John's seventh birthday party. I can tell because, uh, because he has the combat Kurt action figure in his hand. Was that his favorite toy? You could say that. For six months before his birthday, he told everybody that's all he wanted. The combat Kurt doll with the kamikaze kick. So I guess he got one. No. He got eight. <laughs> Every one of them exactly the same. Mm. Kind of silly, right? Well, it worked out all right because he broke seven of them. God, I could never figure that kid out. You should try it sometime. He's really not so bad. Oh, it's at the time. Uh, I, I gotta go. Um, meeting some people. Leo, think about what I said, and thank you. I'm as quick as the rest But I'm a slow burn Solitary and alone As the shadows in the halls In a man's only As the heart he keeps inside And his heart's only strong Where you got you? I don't know, it's been a while. Ah, uh, well, I'll be here all night when you make up your mind. Uh, wait a sec. Yep. Uh, give me a shot of tequila. Okay. Sorry, I'm, uh, no, do you have a newspaper? Yeah, sure. So, about a week ago, me and my wife had a little meeting and everything went pretty well. 
And this week, I was granted partial visitation rights for my kids. It's been a great week. Would anyone else like to speak? My name, <clears throat> my name is Lee, and I'm an alcoholic. My last drink was 15 minutes ago. I only had one, but one or 100 it doesn't make a difference, right? Before then, I hadn't had a drink in five years. It's just, I've just been going through a rough time lately. My mom recently passed away, and I know I shouldn't use that as an excuse to abuse alcohol again. Actually, it's the other parent that drove me to drink. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't joke about my situation, but two weeks ago, my life was perfect. I had a great job, the love of a wonderful woman, and a beautiful baby on the way. And in a few short days later, my father re-enters my life and everything falls apart. He's always had that effect on me. Always putting me down, treating me like a second-class person. He'd probably take great satisfaction knowing that I felt sobriety too. Oh, fuck. Dad? Contractions. The baby's coming. All right, Maggie, just relax. Where's Lee? We got into a huge fight. He stormed off hours ago. He doesn't have a cell. I, I don't know where he is. Do you boys need menus? Uh, no, just coffee. Sure. How long have you been an alcoholic? Well, in the old days, it was called being a social drinker. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a few drinks after work to unwind. Looking forward to the weekend. Having a good time with your friends. Truth be told, we were doing pretty much the same thing you and your friends were doing when, when you were out getting wasted. It just, 
seemed more respectable. To answer your question, um, I didn't start really drinking until after the the accident. That's when I got. Ironic, right? There I am, angry at you for drinking and driving, and uh, I'm drowning my sorrows in booze. I guess, uh, I guess I was just looking to make the pain go away. You can numb the pain, but it's always there. Yeah. <clears throat> Dad, I had no idea what you were going through. Mm -hmm. Of course not. You ran away. Yeah, because you treated me like shit. I was hurting too. I know I had no right to ask for forgiveness, but a simple hug would have been enough to keep me here. Well, I couldn't. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Try to imagine what it was like for me, out there on my own. Recovery's a bitch with no support system, looking to complete strangers for a shoulder to cry on. But don't shed a tear for me, Leo. I manned up and faced my demons. So what do you got to say about that, old man? It was really that hard, huh? <laughs> yeah. Living under the same roof as me. Yeah. And don't try to tell me it was just tough love. You were just an asshole. I know, I know. put your mother through all kinds of hell. She begged and pleaded with me to stop, to stop the drinking. The years just, this kind of went by in, in, in a fog. What, my, my misery is funny to you? No, it was just, it's just hard to believe that the only thing we have in common is alcoholism. But obviously we both saw the light and realized that there's more to life than just happy hour. <laughs> Today has been a revelation. Well, Christ, it's not like I uh, woke up one morning and crawled out of a bottle singing, all you need is love. So what made you stop drinking? Imminent death. <clears throat> After your mother's ultimatum, I, uh, I went to the doctor on a routine checkup and, uh, 
He found something. <clears throat> what? My kidneys. They're shot. I basically quit drinking because I didn't want to die or fall down drunk. But it was too late. Well, I'm living on borrowed time, son. Well, this is pretty sobering, consider we just lost mom. I mean, there's got to be something we can do. We can get a transplant. We can put your name on the list. I've been on the list for months. Okay, then, then there's still hope. Yeah, I, I guess. But, uh... <clears throat> I have to tell you, um... Uh, lately, I've been considering... removing my name from, from the list. Why? I just... There are a lot of people who deserve a second chance. Probably more than me. Your mother. Well, your mother didn't didn't get one. So what are you going to do? Sit back and wait. <clears throat> the ambulance will be here soon. I know. Reggie, I can't thank you enough for being with me. I'm right here. I just wish Lee would come home. Me too. Where's Leo? He went to meet some people. Do you have a cell number? He doesn't have one. Leo's too cheap to buy one. <laughs> Wait a minute, today's Thursday. Yeah. Let me make a call. Dad, I think I have a solution to your problem. And it won't deprive anyone. Let me donate a kidney to you. What? You heard me. I'll take the necessary tests and provided I'm a match, You'll hopefully live a long and healthy life. Oh. Uh, well, that's, um... After Maggie and the baby, you're the only family I have left. I'm, I'm not sure what to Mr. say. Strong. Yes. yes. Um, There's a phone call for Leo Strong. Um, hello? Leo. It's Maggie. She's going into labor, and we can't find Lee. Oh, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, he's here. It's Reggie. Hey, Reg. Lee, did you leave something at home? <laughs> yeah, my cell. Oh, God, Maggie. It's time? Oh, yeah, it's time. Is that Lee? Tell him we're going to the hospital. We'll meet him there. I'm gonna kill him if he makes me have this kid alone. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, we'll, we'll be right there. Let's go. Dad. I don't know if I can do this. It'll work out fine, son. We made it there in plenty of time. I helped bring my daughter into the world. And my dad was right. There is no greater feeling than watching your child being born. And over time, my father and I grew closer. He's not around anymore. But I'm glad he got to know his two granddaughters, Alice and Sarah.
So 